The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Now large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned to them and said, Whoever comes to me does not, and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even life itself cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he had laid a foundation and it is not able to finish, all who will see him will begin to ridicule him, saying, this fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going out to wage a war against another king, will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose one who comes against him with 20,000? If he cannot, then while the other is still far away, he sends his delegation and asks for terms of peace. So therefore, none of you can become my disciples if you do not give up all your possessions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. This text is, as I talked to other preachers this past week, is not one that we as pastors really like to preach on because there are some very harsh words from Jesus. He's telling us to consider what we are willing to sacrifice or what we are willing to give up in order to follow him, even to the point of selling all our possessions. Now, as I said, I, each week when it comes to getting ready for worship, I meet with a number of other Lutheran and non-Lutheran um, clergy to talk about the upcoming week's texts. Now, this is not the first time I've ever been part of a group like this. In every community that I have served, I have sought out colleagues to talk to, to seek counsel from, to pray with. So all these groups serve different purposes. Some are very active and they would meet once a month or even sometimes once a week. They plan different ministry activities and we collaborate together like earlier this past summer when we collaborated with the other Lutheran churches for our vacation Bible school program. While others meet less often and are less active. But it's always interesting when I meet with different groups, I get a little more of an insight on how different faiths or different denominations practice what they believe and how they live out their faith. The one here in Berlin that meets more on a quarterly basis, there's, there's a congregational Episcopal church, a non-denominational church, an Islam um, faith leader that are part of this group. And I think in what I have found in, in Christianity, there are four different ways that we believe and share our faith. There's a way of being, a way of living, a way of doing, and a way of thinking. These are sort of the four different ways that I believe in Christianity we live out our faith. Now, I love the way that we in the Lutheran Church do things. We think about our faith. Sometimes it is a little harder to, to live out our faith, to, to do our faith, and to believe with our faith. And we in the Lutheran Church, we think, we study, we take in context what we believe and how we believe it. I spend a lot of time during the week thinking about my sermon, what am I going to preach on Sunday? And each week when I gather with my Lutheran colleagues, we think together about the text, we talk about, we wonder how we are going to believe, how are we going to think, how are we going to proclaim this, this wonderful God that we have. Thinking and belief are very important. But what I think Jesus talks about in the text today, and I think even more important sometimes than thinking and believing, is living and doing. One of the difficulties when we talk about doing something in our faith is that we can easily get in 
the, the conversation about trying to earn God's favor, trying to earn God's love by doing the right thing. We sometimes want to justify our works. But God is a God of grace and a God of salvation. God gives us these gifts which are beyond our ability to to outwork anything that we have done in the world. Grace is a gift from God. And when we talk about living and and doing, we talk about grace because grace is, is what we do when we love one another, when we forgive one another, when we share the love of Christ that we have received from God. Grace is freely given to each and every one of us. And as a people of God, it is important for us to live out our faith and to do the things that God calls us to do. Which means there is a cost to being a disciple of God. Jesus calls for us to sacrifice. Actually, he doesn't ask. He tells us and even expects and demands our loyalty when it comes to following the ways of God. This is why we are asked to count the cost. Because the Christian life demands our commitment to be part of the church. And this is one of the reasons why I think a church attendance continues to go down all over the country and sometimes all over the world. With all the stresses of life, with the ups and downs that we face on a regular basis, we have this feeling that we want to come to church and hear about how much God loves us. But Sundays, sometimes we hear how much it's going to cost us to make sacrifices in order to live out our faith. Not because it makes God happy, but because it is the right thing to do when it comes to our faith. Which means for many, many people, it's easier to sleep in on a Sunday morning or to have these few hours to prepare for a busy week. But when I sit around the table with other colleagues, Lutheran and otherwise, I realize that the sacrifice that we make when it comes to our faith just doesn't end in church. It sometimes feels like our lives are ridiculed with sacrifices. Like when you have children or grandchildren that want to serve or play on a sports team, or you want or feel like you need to put in hours and hours at work or spend money going to the gym or to the doctor. You sacrifice based on your priorities. And in our scripture today, Jesus is saying that the kingdom of God, the kingdom of life, should be a priority for us. Each and every one of us. It should be the priority that we think about every day. But if we were to write the parable today using the the sacrifices that many people make, We may say, what parent wouldn't count the cost before signing up for the next travel soccer team? Or what employee wouldn't consider whether she or he is willing to work every weekend their first year of a new job? The problem isn't the sacrifice, because we all make sacrifices. What this passage is saying is that the Christian discipleship calls for the same sacrifices that we make in every other aspect of our life. But I know I am the one who is sitting up here preaching to you who come here faithfully each and every week. Those who already know and do the sacrifices on a regular basis. I feel like those who are in this room today are the ones who make discipleship a priority who put your faith above many things in your life. So the question is, what do we do about that? Will we continue to think about our relationship with God? And when we speak to others, we speak with confidence about God's love 
for everyone in the world. And by the knowledge that whatever may happen or wherever we may be or wherever we may go, God continues to be with us. Because we are going into a new season of life, a new season in our church. We continue to think about our future and we think about how we are going to continue to be the people of God. And we aren't going out there and telling people, if you are not making sacrifices for the church, if you are not going to church every Sunday, then you are a bad person or a bad Christian. But we simply ask ourselves and others, what is important to us? What do we hope for our lives? What do we hope for our families? Not simply because we should ask these questions, but because we all want an abundant life that is promised to us by God. And to be a disciple of Christ does take sacrifices. Again, not to earn God's favor or to earn God's grace, but because of all that is possible when we are a disciple of Christ. Because this is not about earning eternal life with God, because God has already given that to us but it is about the character of our Christian lives. So we take what we experience here, the the songs that we sing together, the prayers that we pray together, we, we take what we hear when we gather around the altar with one another to receive the body and blood of Christ. We take what we get here and we bring it out into the world to share with the world this amazing grace that is given to us. Because when we face sacrifices in the world, now more than ever, we need to be able to feel, to experience that love and that grace given to us freely by Jesus Christ, God the Father. Thanks be to God in Jesus' name. Amen.